Hey guys, welcome to today's class. Have fun. Welcome to class today. <clears throat> today we'll be looking at curved spherical mirrors, reflection of light waves, objects and images. Okay. <clears throat> so in last class we talked about reflection on plane surfaces. We only discussed on plane surfaces. And also I was able to explain to us that reflection occurs through mirrors or reflection occurs in mirrors why refraction occurs in lenses so today i'll be talking about reflection in mirrors now which are curved spherical mirrors so due to reflection in mirrors we have we're going to be discussing about our objects the objects that are placed in front of the mirrors and the images formed by such spherical mirrors so this is all based on the principle of reflection so we have basically two types of curved mirrors first we have the concave mirror and we have the convex mirror first when we talk about the concave mirror like the name implies concave like an inward area of space so when we're talking about concave mirrors now the concave mirror is a curved mirror that produces real images and has the right hand side coated the reflecting surface bends inwards causing rays to converge after reflection i'm talking about the concave mirror a concave mirror is a curved mirror the topic is curved spherical mirrors it's a curved mirror that produces real images now by real images we mean images that can be produced on photographic screen. That is, images that the rays of light are being incidented and reflected. So we still come to see the differences between real and virtual images. So real images have their points of intersection. You have, okay, I'll be coming to that. So, so they produce real images. They have their right hand side coated. Now, what does this mean? Like I explained earlier, a mirror has a particular side of it coated. A mirror has just one reflecting surface. But for a lens, you have a, the total area or the total space of that lens is the refracting surface. But for a mirror, you only have one side coated. The other side is the reflecting surface. So a concave mirror produces real image the first time there. Now it has the right and side coated and this is the right hand side this is the left hand side it says the reflecting surface bends inwards causing rays to con converge so for a concave mirror a concave mirror converges light rays now all this means is that now rays of light being incidented now on this concave mirror they tend to converge at a point so concave mirrors converge light rays after they are being reflected on the mirror so a ray of light convert incident rays now it's in this concave mirror they converge at a particular points so talking about convex mirror now now a convex mirror produces virtual images it has the left hand side coated the reflecting surface bends outwards causing the rays to diverge so a total opposite of a total opposite of a concave mirror is the convex mirror now in a convex mirror it produces virtual images it has the left hand side coated now this was our right Hand side left hand side for a concave mirror the right hand side is coated but for a convex mirror it is the right hand side left hand side which is coated so this is our reflecting surface so this is where our light rays are being incidented at so this is a convex mirror so it says reflecting surface bends outwards causing rays to diverge now, this is a concave mirror. This is the reflecting surface. 
Now, because the reflecting surface bends inwards, light rays tend to converge on incidents in it. So, a concave mirror can also be called a diverging mirror. Now, this is our convex mirror now. Now, our reflecting surface bends outwards, not inwards now. So, because of it bends inwards, outwards, incident trees which have been reflected there tends to diverge for a concave mirror. It's also known as a diverging, sorry, a converging. Also known as a converging mirror, while a convex mirror is also known as a diverging mirror. Now, in the last class, I was able to discuss the difference between a converging light ray and a diverging light ray. For converging rays, they tend to meet at a point, while diverging rays they spread out from a known point. So, that's that on concave and convex mirrors. So now we'll be looking at terms associated with mirrors. Now we've been discussing about mirrors. So what are the terms associated now with mirrors? So we have various parts of a typical mirror. Now, for example, I'll be taking a concave mirror. That's the right hand side quoted. So this is a typical concave mirror. Now, the first term associated with mirrors are the aperture. Now, what do you mean by aperture? The cut-out section of the curved surface where light rays are being incidented. So, the parts of the mirror, and you know, we can have a full mirror, we can have a mirror longer than this, but the parts which we are concerned with, the cut-out section in which we are concerned with is what we refer to as the aperture. Um, where light rays are incidental. So for this mirror now, the, the distance from here to here is what gives us our aperture. So this is the aperture of a mirror of the mirror concave, concave mirror now in this case. So also we have what we refer to as focus. Now the focus is the point where the range of lights incidented on a curved surface is reflected to either converge or diverge now it says the focus now like the name implies focus to the focal center of a mirror now when rays because mirrors reflect light rays so when light rays are being incidented on a mirror you have light rays have been incidented on the mirror now the points where these light rays are set to converge or diverge after reflection is what we refer to as a focus. Now, for a concave mirror, which is a converging mirror, it has its focus denoted as F. Now, after the light rays have been incidented, they converge at this point. So, light ray coming like this, this going this way, converges at this point converges at this point because this is a concave mirror so the point in which light rays converge after reflection is the focus of this mirror now for a convex mirror a convex mirror remember a convex mirror has its reflecting surface bending outward so this is our reflecting surface now, for a convex mirror, light rays are being incidented and they tend to spread outward, they tend to diverge. And this is the focus of the convex mirror. Okay, so we discuss the aperture, which is the cutout section of the mirror, we discuss the focus. So now we'll be looking at curvature. Now what is curvature? And the imaginary center of the curved surface is what we refer to as the center of curvature. This is the imaginary center of a mirror. Now we take an aperture of a mirror. 
as just a cut out section of the mirror now the mirror can be spherical or circular in shape but this is the area which we are concerned with this is the aperture now the mirror has a focus now the center of the mirror the imaginary center of the mirror is what we refer to as c which is our center of curvature so this curvature is the imaginary center of the curved surface so we say this is our curvature now the center of curvature of the mirror so it is the imaginary center of our mirror so we have also the pole and the pole is the center point produced on an aperture okay we've been able to establish our focus where light rays converge or diverge we have our center of curvature the imaginary center of the aperture of the mirror now we have the pool now the center points of that mirror is what we refer to as the pool so it's the center point produced on an aperture so the center point of this mirror is the pool so you take a mirror as you have a circle and a particular cut out section now this is for a circle you say this is a arc the whole area is a circumference but you are concerned with an arc of the circle now this cut out section is our aperture and the, the points the center point of our cut out section here is what referred to as the pole p so this is our center point of the cut out section so also we have another term we use mirrors the principal axis now the line joining the pole to the center of curvature is what we refer to as principal axis now the first thing i drew was a straight line so this straight line is what we refer to as the principal axis so the line joining our center of curvature passing through the focus to the pole is what we refer to as our, our principal axis so lastly we have the focal length focal length coined from the focus the distance from the focus point to the pole very simple is our focal length now we establish our focus center of curvature the pole the distance from the center of curvature to the pole is our principal axis now this is our focus now the distance from here running through here is all referred to as focal lengths the distance from the focus to the pole is our focal length now since we are able to establish that c is the center of the circle now so if we are take, taking a sphere now a circle now so that means this is our radius this is our radius of the circle and because you have a circle the distance from here to here is the diameter now half way through is the radius and this is our curvature and our focus lies here so from experiment it is proven that our focus or focal length is equal to the radius over two so our focus is in between the center of curvature and the pole of the circle so that gives us our focal length is equal to r over 2 so also looking at the principle of reversibility now the principle simply agrees with the fact that incidental ray is reflected on the same line of its incidence so this is just a confirmation of the law of reflection and the law of reflection states that you have a normal law that the incident ray, the normal ray, and the reflected ray all lie on the same plane. And this is our incident ray, I, reflected, and this is the normal. So the principle of reversibility agrees with the fact that the incident ray is reflected on the same line of its incidence, of its incidence, and this is true for every surface. So yeah, the incident ray is being reflected on the same line in which it is incident so it is it is incidented on this point and on this line and it is also reflected on that point at that same plane that's what the principle of reversibility talks about 
So quickly now, we'll be looking at images formed on concave mirrors. Now, let's not forget that we have a discussion about the two types of mirror. And this is our concave mirror. And this is our convex mirror. The con concave mirror, the, the it has its inward area, inward side bent. While for a convex mirror, it is the outward side that is bent outwards. So, we are discussing images formed on concave mirrors now. Now, basically for concave mirrors, we have three methods in which images have been formed on a concave mirror. Now, recall that a mirror simply reflects light rays. So, we have three ways in which these light rays can reflected now we'll be talking about our focus we have the curvature and we have between our focus and curvature now light rays you have a mirror a mirror has <coughs> that's the center of curvature that's the focus and this is our pool. Now, these are the three main aspects of the mirror now, in which light rays are going to be dealing with now, or the relationship between light rays and these parts of the mirror. Now, light rays being incident into the mirror depends on whether it is passing through the center of curvature, passing through the focus, or it is passing in between the curvature and focus. So basically, we have rays that are parallel to the principal axis reflected away from the mirror through the focus. You have rays reflected through the curvature <clears throat> and you have rays reflected through either the focus after the focus before or beyond the curvature. So basically, <clears throat> this is the summary of every image now we are going to be discussing. So I want us to know the focus the curvature and between the focus and the curvature so because these are the principal areas of a mirror so the first image nature of image formed now using these three principles now now when an object is beyond c the image is inverted diminished real and formed between c and f okay so the first nature we should be discussing is when an object is beyond C. Now I told us to be dealing with center center of curvature. I told us to be dealing with the center of curvature, the focus and between the center of curvature and focus now. So the first instance now an object which is beyond C. Now this is an object this is our center of curvature. Now the object is beyond it. So the image formed is usually inverted, real, diminished, and formed between C and F. So you have an object beyond C. The rays are being reflected on the mirror, bounce back to form our image. Now our image is inverted. It is a real image. It is diminished. It is smaller than the object, and it is formed between C and f now that is the first instance now now we have another instance here and the second instance now now when the object is at c the image is real inverted same size as the object and formed at c so when an object is placed at the center of curvature the image formed is real it is inverted upside down it is the same size as the object and it is formed at that point C again. For the first instance, you have the object beyond C. It is not at C. So in that first in instance, the image is inverted. It is real also. Now it is smaller because it is beyond C. And it is formed between C and F for the first instance. For the second instance, now when the object is at the center of curvature, the image is also formed at the center of curvature. This is the same size as the object. It is real. 
and it is inverted. Now the third instance we have here now, we have the objects at C and F. Now if the object is located between the center of curvature and the focus, what happens in this case now? And the image is inverted, the image is real, it is magnified, and it is formed beyond C. Okay, so if the object is located now between the center of curvature and the focus, the light rays being reflected, so the light incident rays, and these are the ones being reflected back to form the uh, image. Now in this case, it is noticed that the object formed, the image formed, is also inverted. It is also real image, but in this case, it is magnified. It is bigger than the ob object, and it is formed beyond C. And if you recall, in the first case now, when the object was beyond C, now it was inverted, real, diminished, and formed between C and F. On the second case, the object was at C, and it was also formed at C, same size as the object, real, inverted, formed at C also. Now, in this case now, the object was placed between C and F, so it's just a reversal of the first case. So we should take note of the ints we can use to recall. Now, since it's a reversal, the object was formed beyond C. The object is formed beyond C. It is magnified, inverted array. For the first case, it was diminished. But since it is a reversal of the first case, in this case now, the object formed is magnified. So now we'll be moving to the fourth example now. Now, an object at F, the focus, the image is formed at infinity. So for an object at the focus now, concave mirror, it's F, C. So when an object is placed at the focus, the incident rays. Now for an object placed at the focus, the nature of the image formed is at infinity. Infinity. So that means we don't even have intersection of the light rays. So there are no points of intersection for the light rays produced. So when an object is placed at infinite at F, sorry, at the focus, the nature of the image is formed at infinity. So for an object now placed at the focus, nature of the image formed is at infinity. Okay. So we look at the object placed after F. And the object is placed after F. So what happens if the object is placed at this point now? Now, if the object is placed after this point, so what simply happens here is that the intersection comes outside the mirror. And the object is placed after the focus. This is our focus center of position. It's placed after the focus. And the image formed is virtual. It is magnified, it is behind the mirrors and erect. Now, this is the first and only instance in concave mirrors in which the image form is virtual. So, what does this tell us that every concave mirror produces real images except for when the object is placed after F? So when the object is placed after F, the image form is virtual. It is not a real image. It is magnified. It is larger than it. And it is formed behind the mirror. And it is erect and upright. So it's also at this point that you have an erect and upright image. For every other image formed by a concave mirror, it is real and always inverted real and always inverted so that is the property of a concave mirror but only after f in which the object is at after f if the object is placed after f that is when we have a virtual image and we have an erect or upright image 
now the last instance now now when the object is placed at infinity the object is placed at infinity the image is inverted the image is real it is diminished and formed at f so you have an object now you have the focus you have the center of curvature and the object is placed at infinity infinity now so the intersection Our object is at infinity, it's at a very far distance away from us. So the light rays coming at infinity hits the con concave mirror, reflection of course, and you have the image formed. Now the nature of the image formed in this case now is inverted. It is real. For every concave mirror, you have real and inverted image, except for number five. It is inverted, it is real, it is diminished, and in this case now it is formed at the focus now now when the object is at infinity the object is what is formed at the focus now this is a reversal of case number four now for this number five was the only exception when the object is after f it is formed behind the mirror so this is a summary of light rays which are being incidented on concave mirrors like i said before i explained i said we'll be dealing with three cases now i said we'll be dealing with rays which are parallel to the principal as is reflected away from the mirror through the focus one I said those parallel also reflected back through the center of curvature and those which are reflected either through the center of curvature or focus away between them or after them now so you can see this is a summary of the six cases now now when an object is placed beyond c the nature of the image formed is formed between c and f it is real it is inverted it is smaller but coming to number three now if the object is now placed back at that point between c and f the nature of the image formed will be formed beyond c also it will be real and inverted for all concave mirrors but since for the first instance it was diminished but in this case now the object the image formed will be magnified so number one and number three are interchangeable so for number two when the object is placed at the center of curvature the nature of the image formed is also at the center of curvature it is real and inverted as always for every concave mirror and the nature of the image formed is inverted the same size as the object now for case number four when an object is placed at the focus it is formed at the infinity for the last case, when the object is placed at infinity, it is formed at the focus. So, case number four and case number six are interchangeable also. If an object is placed at the focus, the image will be formed at infinity. If it's the object is placed at infinity, the image will be formed at the focus to be real, inverted, and smaller than the object itself. So, and the last case here, number five, which is the only exceptional case when an object is placed after the focus the nature of the image formed is real sorry it is virtual it is not real it is erect it is not inverted and it is formed behind the mirrors now we discuss concave mirrors now for images formed on convex mirrors now every image formed by a convex mirror is virtual it is diminished and it is erect or upright and we recall that for a convex concave mirror now every of them had a real image and inverted image except for number five but for a convex mirror every image located at any points on the mirror any rays intersected at any point of the mirror is always virtual diminished erect or upright so that brings us to the focal length of these mirrors. 
and for a concave mirror the focal length is positive while a convex mirror has a focal length which is negative and for a concave mirror this is a concave mirror our focal length is positive but for a convex mirror our focal length is negative so for a concave mirror our focal length is at the left hand side but for a convex mirror the focal length is at the right hand side of the mirror so quickly before we look at some examples and past questions we have some mirror formulas which will be using to solve questions now so we have different mirror formulas now the first mirror formula is 1 over u is plus 1 over v is equals to 1 over f f is the focal length we call that our focal length is r over 2 now u is our object distance u stands for our object v stands for our image so you can also replace them as this so that's why i put them here so u is the object distance v is the image distance so in any question we are solving either we see u or v or we see di or d naught to imply the same thing so object distance and image distance so u is always our object distance v is the image because an object can only come before the image is being formed so the object comes before the image and this is our focal length so the first formula i'll be using and also magnification in the previous class on the youtube channel on physics i explained to us magnification i said magnification is the ratio of image height to object height or image distance to object distance so magnification is simply v over u or image height over object height for magnification i'm talking about image over object image over objects image height over object height the image height is v like i said and the object height is u so we also have <coughs> magnification another formula for magnification so you will simplify these two equations we are going to have a third equation magnification is equal to the object height over focal length minus one so also we have p now p stands for the power so the power of a lens is equals to one over the focal length the power of a lens is equals to one over f one divided by the focal length so these are basic formulas we'll be using one two three four so the knowledge of these four formulas is also be combined to solve questions so now we have applications of curved mirrors you have various applications of curved mirrors you have convex mirror it's used in car driving mirrors using supermarket mirrors because a convex mirror is a diverging mirror recall that it's a diverging mirror this is, it's it's diverges reflected rays so it can, it's used in car driving mirrors and supermarket mirrors because of the large and wider views it gives us a convex concave mirror is a, used as a shaving and dentist mirror they call that this is our concave mirror light rays incidented have been converged to meet at the point so it is used in shaving mirrors and dentist mirrors now we also have a parabolic mirror and by a parabolic mirror we're talking about a mirror now a parabola is parabola is something like this now in a parabolic mirror it is different from the convex or concave mirror so this parabolic mirror reflects light rays in all parts of their surface on the focus so you have various areas in which light rays can be reflected so you have multiple reflection of parallel rays so parabolic mirrors have large area for incident incidentation of light rays and it reflects parallel rays along its focus so it's used in such lights car headlamps and so on and so forth so now we'll be solving past question and this is a neko 2019 past question now 
and employs to solve questions as much as possible. You can check out the reference material which I'm using for us, which is essential physics. Essential physics. So this is a past question. I'm solving question 17. This is question 17. 17 D now. This is a question just to do with light waves, reflection on mirrors, and so on and so forth. Okay, so it says a slide is placed 20 centimeter from the lens of a projector. Now you have a projector. And it is placed 20 centimeter from the lens of the projector. A slide is placed 20 centimeter. So that tells us our object distance is 20 centimeter. I told us U stands for object distance, V stands for image. Object comes before image. Object distance, image distance. Okay. Now, from the lens of the projector of magnification 60, so our magnification is 60. We've been given the magnification already. And we says calculate the focal length of the lens. We have to find our focal length. The slide is placed 20 centimeters from the lens. That is our object is the slide. So our U is 20 centimeters. It's placed from the lens of the projector of magnification 60. We have our M, which is 60. Calculate the focal length of the lens. Okay, so the first formula which I gave us was 1 over u plus 1 over v equals to 1 over f. We have to find the focal length, which is f. So provided we have u and v, we can just do a change of subject. But when we only have u, we don't have v. Now, so if you recall that your magnification is equal to v over u, Magnification is equal to image distance over object distance or image height over object height. So since we are giving the magnification now to be 60, so 60 is equal to V over 20. So our V now is 60 multiplied by 20. So 1,200 centimeter. So this is the image distance produced by the lens, 1,200 centimeter away. So to find our focal length now, 1 over f, 1 over u, u which is 20, plus 1 over v, 1,200. So this gives us 1,200. 20 and 1,200 gives us 60 plus 1. So our 1 over f is equal to 61 over 1,200. So record that we actually find <coughs> the focal length f, not 1 over f. So to find f, so that will simply give us 1, 2 over 61. Just inversion. 1 over f is this. So f would be 1,002 over 61. So that gives us 19.7 centimeter. So this is our focal length of the lens of that particular projector. Okay, this is a 2015 YEC past question. 2015, and this is one of the theory questions. Question 10D. And it says, a diverging length of focal length 18 meters is used to view a shark that is 19 meters away from the lens. And it says, a diverging length of focal length 18 meters. So F is equal to 18 meters. Is used to view a shark that is 19 meters away from the lens. The shark is our object. It is 19 meters away from the lens. So our U object distance is 90 meters. Okay, so we are interpreting the question. Now it says, if the image formed is one meter long, the image which was formed is one meter long. So our image height is one meter. It says calculate the image distance, which is V, and the length of the shark, the object's height. Okay, let me run through it again. The diverging length of focal length is 18 meters. The focal length is 18 meters. It's used to view a shark that is 90 meters away from the lens. And the shark is the object, but it is 90 meters away from the lens. The object's distance, U, is 90 meters. If the image formed is 1 meter long, 
to the heights of our image is one meter. Calculate the image distance, which is V, and the length of the shark. Now the object's height itself is what we have to find. Okay, I've gotten the parameters in there already, so I just need to interpret and so. So we have the focal length, the image distance, the image height. Now we have to find object distance and object height. Now using these two formulas, length formulas which I gave earlier, 1 over f is 1 over u plus 1 over v. Magnification is the object, so image distance over object distance or image height over object height. So we have to find v and oi. So to find v initially, we are using this first formula since we have the focal length and u. So 1 over v will be equal to 1 over f minus 1 over u. So that gives us 1 over 18 minus 1 over 90. So 1 over v gives us 5 minus 1 gives us 4 over 90. And 1 over v is equal to 4 over 90. So v inversion gives us 90 over 4. That gives us 22.5 meter. So the object was at 90 meters away from the lens. The image formed is 22.5 meter away from the lens. So to find our object height, now we use the relationship for magnification. Now V over U was to image height over object height. V 22.5. U given from the question 90, image height given as 1, object height is unknown. So by cross multiplying now, 90 times 1 over 22.5 gives us 4.0 meter. So this is the length of the shark. The object height was 4 meter, but the image of the shark was 1 meters. And this is due to magnification. So this is an objective question of the same like 2015 question. Now, question 26 says an object is placed 15 centimeter from a diverging length. Object distance u. The object is placed 15 centimeter from the diverging length of focal length 27 centimeter. The focal length of the mirror or the lens is 12 centimeter. Now the image of the object formed by the lens is, is it real? We have to find the distance of the image and whether it is real or virtual. Now using the mirror formula, 1 over f plus 1 over u plus 1 over v. We have to find the image formed, the distance of the image formed. We have to find v. So simply by interchange, 1 over v is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over u. So it gives us 1 over 12 minus 1 over 15. 1 over V gives us LCM which is 60. 12 and 60 gives us 5. 15 and 64, 1 over 60. So by inversion, 1 over V is equal to 1 over 60. So V is equal to 60 centimeter. So we check our option. 60 centimeter from the lens, 60 centimeter from the lens. Now, a diverging lens now does it form real images or virtual images now if you recall now a concave mirror and convex now a concave mirror is also known as a converging mirror a convex mirror is also known as a diverging mirror and this is for mirror mirrors reflect but for lens Lens reflect refract, so it is the opposite. So a concave mirror is a diverging lens, while a convex mirror becomes a converging lens. Converging concave mirror is a converging mirror. Convex mirror is a diverging mirror. Con Cave lens is a diverging lens. Convex lens is a converging lens. And a concave mirror produces real and virtual images. Sorry, produces real. This gives us real images. This gives us virtual images. So if, if they have any interchange, so 
the diverging mirror gives us real images also and this gives us virtual so a diverging lens is a real image producer which i'll explain in the next class actually because this is already a question on lens so it gives us a real image and 60 centimeter away from the lens okay i have another objective question here it says an object is placed 20 centimeter from a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeter so the object's distance is u 20 centimeter the focal length is 15 centimeter calculate the linear magnification of the image from you have to find magnification which is m now using the first mirror formula 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v so we have u we have f we don't know v so just change of subjects 1 over v is 1 over f minus 1 over u it gives us 1 over v f is 15 and u is 20 find the lcm which is 60 4 minus 3 1 over 60 1 over v is equal to 1 over 60 so by inversion v is equal to 60 centimeter so we found our v already so our magnification is image height or object height or image distance over object distance so since our image distance was 60 and we are given the object distance from the mirror 20 60 divided by 20 gives us 3 so our magnification is 3.0 okay, the last example we can have from today is from the reference material essential physics since an object is 2.5 millimeters long an object 2.5 millimeter long is viewed through a converging lens of focal length 10 centimeter so our object height object height is 2.5 millimeters so you convert to centimeter is 0.25 centimeters is viewed through a converging lens of focal length 10 centimeter our focal length is 10 centimeters it is held close to the eye. A magnified image of the object is formed 30 cm from the lens. The image is formed 30 cm from the lens. Image distance V 30 cm. Now we are asked to calculate the distance of the object from the lens, object distance, the size of the image, the image height, and the power of the lens, which is P. Okay, so we've written out the parameters given. Just going to interpret and the first mirror formula I'll be using is 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v. We have f, we don't know u, but we have v. So by changing this change of subject of formula, 1 over u is 1 over f minus 1 over v. So our f is 10, v is 30. So I'm solving this 3 minus 1 over 30. You find the LCM. We have 2 over 30. Now 1 over u is equal to 2 over 30. By inversion, u is equal to 30 over 2 gives us 15 centimeter so our object distance is 15 centimeter so up next we have to find the image height what we know from magnification v over f minus 1 our magnification is 2 so a further explanation or a further expansion of the formula for magnification which is v over u is equal to image height over object height which is our image distance over object distance is equal to image height over object height and our v was 30 u was 15 from the question image height which we asked to find the object height was 25 millimeters which is 0.25 centimeters so cross multiplying 30 times 0.25 divided by 15 gives us 0.5 centimeter so that means our image height was 5 millimeter the object height was 2.5 millimeters so lastly you have to find the power of the lens now power of the lens is one of our focal length the focal length was 10 centimeters one divided by 10 gives 0.1 diopters so the units for the power of the lens is diopters so thanks for listening i employ us to also practice past questions i hope the class was interesting if you have questions please drop them in the comment section or send us an email we would love to help you further see you in the next class